Alrighty, I have a pretty epic video for you guys today. I know that I've been having this coaster locked down to three manufacturers for, I think, over three weeks now. Um, and we've been kind of stagnant. I say that, though, but it, we're literally still in May. And I think I have this thing fully figured out. Um, I want to assure you guys right here at the start of the video that my coverage on this coaster and my predictions are based on evidence um, and have a lot of evidence behind them. And I'm going to go over that in this video. Um, so I am telling you to take everything I say with a grain of salt, obviously, but please just understand that what I'm about to present, I fully stand behind. Whether that information is going to upset some of you or not, um, we're going to talk about it. So let's get started. Why is, am I a thousand percent sure this is not going to be a mock coaster? I can guarantee you guys, like I guarantee on my channel that this coaster will not be a mock coaster. Mock is one of the many manufacturers that only uses rebar for their threaded rod cages. Um, so mock coasters will use um, rebar for the actual threaded rod. Um, and they are one of the manufacturers that uses a thicker spacer, but they use a very distinct design. So I've placed in front of you guys three different coasters, and you guys can go search up any other coaster, Extreme Spinners, um, any other coaster Mach has built. Trust me, me and my friends and team have done extensive research, and the threaded rod for every single Mach coaster is the same. It's the same. It's the same design, same kind of concept. Um, while their footings are marked very similar to what we see at Canada's Wonderland, their rebar cages and their threaded rod, completely not a match. A zero match. Zero possibility. Will not work. Will not do. Will not comprehend with the patents of the threaded rod for Project 2025. So I am here to tell you that it is not a mock. Um, we will not discuss a mock um, of any possibility for Project 2025, and I fully back that behind my channel and my credibility that this will not be a mock. Um, there are two manufacturers that I for sure know that it is not, like with a thousand percent, zero possibility, zero percentage for error, and that is B&M and mock. Um, when it comes down to some of the other manufacturers, uh, there's obviously uh, a lot lower of a chance um, when it comes down to uh, companies like B&M and Vacoma. So B&M and Mock, zero chance. But let's talk about Vacoma. So Vacoma and B&M actually use very similar-ish designs for their threaded rod and their footings. Uh, B&M is obviously a tank when it comes to their threaded rod. It is one of the, uh, besides Mock, one of the easiest manufacturers to distinct um, between when it comes to their threaded rods. They use a very solid plate. Um, they use very thin, almost non-existent uh, spacers that in a lot of instances, especially if you look at Yukon and Leviathan, they'll weld to the actual plate itself. Um, and their threaded rod is so thick, it's almost like a support column in itself. So B&M is one of those manufacturers that over-designs their threaded rod and their support columns, which again, helps when there is a chance of a failure, as you've seen in other coasters. Um, but Vacoma is an interesting manufacturer. So Vacoma was pretty high up on our list about five weeks ago. Um, we were heavily looking at Vacoma, and that was because there was a shipment that arrived at Canada's Wonderland, and it was marked with Vacoma boxes. Um, so we were immediately kind of analyzing everything to do with Vacoma. So this is this is me presenting all the information that we've siphled through, by the way. So there was a shipment from Vacoma that came from the Netherlands, and we looked and we waited, and we saw that those parts uh, were not sent into the mountain. Uh, on the drone, they were sent into the maintenance warehouse. So they were for, obviously, already existing rides, um, and based off of what we know and have seen, um, we can rule out Vacoma. Vacoma has, um, I wouldn't say a 0% chance because anything can happen, obviously, but it is well below, uh, like we would, I would personally put it at a 0% chance, um, but it, it, it just doesn't match. The, the Vacoma is one of those manufacturers that hardly uses spacers. And when they do like B&M, it's non-existent, essentially. It's a very thin, almost washer sized thing. So that's how we're able to eliminate that. 
So my updated manufacturer probability, it's been on the screen for a little bit and you guys are probably groaning. Yes, there's been some changes. Uh, we have upped Zamperla to an 80% chance likelihood and lowered Intamin to a 20% likelihood. There has been some new findings um, in terms of threaded rod and Intamin's patent design of threaded rod. I've talked to many people in the industry, by the way, um, some very renowned people as well that know a lot more. And uh, yes, we've lowered Intamin. Their new coaster, the vertical launch coaster, is the only reason we are keeping it at 20% and not bringing it to 0%. So their LSM current coaster model is not a match for our 2025 project. So the only chance of an Intamin coming to Canada's Wonderland is a vertical launch coaster. So that does leave Zamperla as the most likely manufacturer of our 2025 project. So obviously I am updating um, our kind of, as you just saw, percentages, and that leaves Amusement Insider's official prediction um, at, at Zamperla. So we are predicting a multi-launch LSM uh, coaster by Zamperla. Everything about Zamperla matches our 2025 project. And one of the biggest findings was Zamperla construction photos of a recent project they did. And this led us to the conclusion. And by the way, we just got these photos a couple days ago. So that's why we've been hard at work. The spacers, look at them right there on the right. They are a complete match. It's perfect. The bolts, the threaded rod, um, the caging size, the threaded rod cage size is a complete match. The column markings, they use A and B and C on Zamperla's as well. And we were going to originally just make a video ruling out Premiere. And one of the reasons we're going to rule out Premiere is Premiere uses 1-1, one, 1-2, one, one, two, two, one, two, 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 three, for example, for marking their columns. So if it was a break run, it would be break run 1-1, one, one, break run 1-1-2. One, one, um, so that was a huge help in ruling out uh, Premiere. And the, the, the spacers didn't align fully. Um, with uh, what we were seeing for Project 2025. So that's led us to, uh, uh, it's pretty much got to be, it's it's got to be Zamperla. Um, again, there is room for error, but here are on the screen. So one of the main reasons I want to show you guys is Intamin Threaded Rod has a line, a bar that goes through the circle. If you look there under Intamin, you'll see it. That isn't something we saw in one of the deliveries uh, for Canada's Wonderland from the drone. So that is something that we've completely kind of analyzed in the last couple days. And we've looked at a lot of projects, a lot of projects from Velocicoaster to Tatatis to the, the new um, Georgia Surfer at um, Six Flags Over Georgia. And it's just gotten to the point where we're like, okay, none of these intimate LSMs, including Batman Escape from Gotham City, uh, they don't align with what we're seeing for Project 2025 anymore. They were the closest match in terms of the circular design and the spacing, and more importantly, the spacers. Intamin was one of the main manufacturers that used the spacers. But as you guys know, as we've been talking about, if you think it's going to be Intamin, you have to assume that Zamperla is as equal of a possibility because Zamperla actually has a lot of the ex-Intamin design team on their team now. So obviously a lot of things have kind of moved over to Zamperla. It was why they're able to do such a great launch, such a great um, switch track. Um, and yeah, so that's one of our key findings. So as much as we were all hoping for an Intamin, it has come to our attention that our 2025 coaster at Canada's Wonderland will most likely 99% chance um, even though I put 80% on the screen, uh, be a Zamperla multi-launch coaster that will have a massive element at front gate in Extreme Skyflyer's plot of land um, and the station break run and first launch in Alpin that then launches you into the mountain and heads on over there. Now, as upset as you guys may be, please remember that Top Thrill 2 is receiving better reviews than Top Thrill 1. A lot of people were very um, kind of upset when Zamperla was, cho was chosen, but I've heard from even close friends like Surya that Top Thrill 2 is better than the original. The The launch is powerful. The airtime you get going over the top hat is insane. Um, so I'm really excited. Zamperla is an up-and-comer, and, -comer and uh, having X intimate design team people on board means that, you know what, anything Intamin can do Zamperla most likely can do too. So 
when we're looking at this model, just know that this is a presented model and things can obviously be done. Like this isn't going to fit in the current layout of a construction plot of land at Canada's Wonderland. So they're obviously going to have to do different elements and different things. So just know that whatever Zamperla probably has up their sleeves for Project 2025, it's going to be good. It's going to be insane. Wonderland's banking on this coaster. Um, and there was obviously some sort of crazy deal that they talked about when they were doing Top Thrill 2 that Wonderland changed their plans um, to incorporate uh, Zamperla instead of B&M being the manufacturer for the 2025 project. So I promise you guys, this is going to be good. Uh, everything aligns the brake run size uh, with what we're measuring at Canada's Wonderland, uh, the launch size, the, uh, the, the deals that have gone on. Um, the threaded rod, the spacers, the markings on the columns on the ground, matching Zamperlas, everything is aligning. So this is an 80%, me personally, 99%, uh, but we'll keep it at 80% now, match for our 2025 project. Um, construction should be starting soon. I do have a construction update for you guys. Um, they are just wrapping up building the pool for Moosehorn. Again, they do look a little bit behind even on that. So we'll have to, you know, it's a waiting game. As soon as they're done there, they're going to start Project 2025. So I'm going to say they'll probably start next week. Um, hopefully, fingers crossed, because, you know, it's getting a little boring looking at these little orange markings. I'd love to see some footings. Um, and I'd love to be able to show you guys the threaded rod that we saw on the drone um, in, in person. So... Uh, it would be great to just film that and show you guys why we're jumping to these conclusions because right now you guys are just trusting our word, but I promise you we're going to be able to back this up. Um, our Patreons have seen some of this as well, so any Patreon can back up that we we kind of know what we're talking about here, so just trust us right now. Trust the process. Um, again, I am updating you guys as I learn things and rule things out, so just keep watching. This is a rumors and speculation channel, um, so just join, get get seat sit yourself down buckle yourselves up and enjoy the ride but i can assure you guys that we're not reporting on this blindly you can trust us when it comes to ruling out manufacturers and discussing who has the highest probability of being the manufacturer anyways thanks so much for watching today's video uh, there'll be a construction update for you guys tomorrow um and yeah have a good one guys bye